the fires have gotten a lot closer. You know, this is our forever home. I could not have hoped to live in a more spiritually fulfilling place. And I don't want the dream to die this way. So it's a little upsetting today because it's, it's, well, it's a lot of things. Um, we, we live in a very forested area here. Um, it's actually something that I complain about all the time because there's so much woods around us that it's hard to have a garden that gets enough light and things like that. And today I'm feeling particularly put out by these woods because there are wildfires coming really close to us and it's, it's scary. Um, I, I'm not really afraid for myself or Brian. I'm very afraid for getting our animals out because if you watch the news or even listen to other YouTubers who know people in California, um, there was recently a very, very large, well-known goat herd that was taken out by wildfire because they didn't have time. And so I'm really worried that we just won't have enough time. So we've spent the last two days really preparing and talking to friends and coming up with a plan for what to do. I have some really good friends. Tell everybody what we're doing with our goats. So um, right now we are less than a mile from the area where for our county where they're sheltering people and so for right now we are in the safe area but we are on a alert to be ready and so as part of that we have come up with a plan for watching that site for one thing to say if they start moving people across the river to Gladstone where there's another site then that's when we need to move irregardless of whether they've taken us out of that level one area or not that's when we will move um, and then I have a who, somebody who's kind of become my friend now um, Ashley who we got our goats from you guys might have watched the video where we got our goats from really nice we've gotten our goats from nice breeders they're all wonderful women I'll put in a clip real quick um, but she has offered to take the goats if we can get them to her and I have another friend Sharon who I haven't seen in a long time who offered to come over with her car and a friend and help me get the animals the bunnies and everything out of here so um she lives fairly nearby a couple 10 15 minutes and so she can get here hopefully then we will move everybody somewhere else but I, i'm some of you may wonder why i'm waiting at all um it's it's still unlikely that the fire is going to come this far and the winds have died down. It's starting to get safer. Fire crews are making a dent in it. Um, so, and it's really bad to cause undue stress in these goats. Um, I think the bunnies would be fine if we moved them, but the bunnies can be moved really quickly. Um, so, and particularly the, the boy goats and um, they have I've noticed that they are sensitive when they get moved. Their stomachs get upset. The the food would be different. So I'm just I'm just wanting to wait until we really have to move to go. But it's good to have a plan. Um, Tell so everybody where the farm is that we would take the goats. It, it's in Washington State, so it's about it's a good hour from us, which is another factor is that is that we will be taking them quite far. Um, and we're, we're still in the process of weaning indigo off of milking. So 
Um, that's another thing for me to consider is that I need to milk her every day. Um, so I, I'm trying to make sure we do what's best for these animals and it's really hard to know what to do. So I'm hoping we've made the right choices at this point that, um, that's the best I can do. So, um, but it's been a really, really long day. I had, I've been working for weeks on some things for my job at, that I work from home right now for. And, you know, I worked all last weekend and during Labor Day. And so to last night I had to turn everything off, even though I had the big, a big presentation this morning and I had to do laundry and pack and figure out what to do and things like that and it's been really really stressful and difficult and um but you know I think this is something that you don't really think about when you get into this homesteading and and having animals and that kind of thing is what you will go through when there's an emergency because there's cases where where you can't make the best decisions that you want to make for everybody and it's really hard yeah we, we shouldn't be making these kind of choices the very first year we've ever had goats <laughs> that's uh it's kind yeah, of crazy yeah um no i'm wearing a mask because it's so smoky out here wendy has opted not to yeah um i have uh i have a lot of problems with um I have fibromyalgia and I have a lot of pain in my jaw and my face and with the, it's funny because with the smoke, <laughs> I'm getting a very bad headache and probably a lot of it is more stress than the smoke, but, um, so my face is extremely sensitive. If I touch it, it, it hurts. So it hurts to move my jaw. Crying has been hurting. <laughs> so I'm trying not to move my face too much because right in here it's extremely sore so if I wear a mask right now I won't be able to stand it so I'm not I'm not wearing it but I have been mostly doing things inside the only thing I've done outside is take care of these guys um, so yeah so forgive me for not having my mask on but there's a reason i'm working from home right now <laughs> it's not because i don't have an office to go to i do but my company has very kindly allowed me to keep working from home as long as the pandemic is or whatever um at least until such a point where they can't not have me in the office so um, which is great because i don't know how people with problems like mine can manage to wear a face mask all day long and it, it would be completely intolerable for me um it's hard for me right now just to turn my head and when i'm wearing the mask and i can't turn my head i lose my ability to navigate and when i go to the grocery store i run into the walls and the cart and things like that because i just it it impairs an impaired person further so not to complain or anything i think you know, but it, it is, <laughs> it's a thing. This is not how this video was supposed to be. What I was anticipating as early as yesterday. Fire danger is a very real thing right now. We're right at the end of summer. We really haven't had a lot of rain conditions are incredibly dry and the temperatures are pretty high so fire is a uh, is kind of a big deal there are two fires relatively close by they're both fairly good distance away so we're not worried but there were folks last night that had to evacuate a lot of people out here in the west are hoping for rain we've got a neighbor uh, Randy and Kathy, and their daughter and son-in-law just had to evacuate out to their place. And you know, they lived in Malala, which isn't too far away. And uh, 
and they brought a goat with them, a fainting goat that they just tied up to the tree in their front yard. And we, we had offered to host their goats so they could be in a penned area and safe from predators and you know plenty of food and water and nothing nothing to worry about but uh, he uh, he decided just to keep the goat a little closer to where he's staying yeah. and yeah, I um, think it's a good choice for him with their in-laws yeah. and and I think they're actually putting up a temporary uh, pen for him right now with the tea posts and that kind of thing yeah hello goody how you doing? All right. Looks like you got a pretty good pin there. Yeah, it'll be it'll be decent for all right. You know, for hopefully temporary. Yeah. Did you need any more T posts? We've got a handful that. Uh... No, I actually bought two extra. I wasn't sure how big I was gonna make it, so. Yeah. I just kind of. Yeah. Shot for a little bit extra. Well, that looks like it'll be it'll be good. What's her name? Noodle. Noodle. How old is she? Uh, good question. <laughs> so when we got her, I think they said she was around four. Yeah. Um, I actually had two of them, but the other one got attacked by a dog mirror. Dog sitting and ended up having a shooter. Oh. But uh, so she's probably well, seven. Mm-hmm. Something mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, she's. Yeah, we're just getting started with our goats there. You guys have like milking goats and stuff? Yeah, we've got yeah. one goat in milk and five all together. Yeah, that was the one thing I did not want to deal with was milking. Oh. And uh, Kara found her and her, wasn't well, exactly a sister, but the other one. Mm -hmm. For free out in Colton, some people were getting rid of them. Oh, well, that's a good price. Yeah. And they, uh, yeah, you don't have to milk them, you don't have to do anything. Keep it simple. Yeah, that was kind of my my hope because I work a lot, so yeah. I don't want to have to deal with all that. All right. Well, I'll leave you to it. Right on. So. Yeah. I, this it, the video was going to be <laughs> us introducing a goat that wasn't our goat, just a, a temporary visitor goat, but yeah. the the fire evacuation goat, and you know, being a good you know good neighbors and helping out. That's that's kind of what we wanted to demonstrate. And if things go the wrong way here, yeah, we'll be on the receiving end of that. On the receiving end, yeah. Now, now we're we're worried about our property, and we're worried about our animals. We're worried about where to take them. So, yeah, it's a lot harder to be here than it was to be there for sure. So, yeah, yeah. This is Brian from Ivy Acres Homestead. I'm coming to you from the top of our roof with my leaf blower. The fires have gotten a lot closer. Maybe I'd say about 15 miles away. Our county, Clackamas County, is now completely under an evacuation alert. There's three stages. Ready, set, and go. Green, yellow, red. We're in the lowest, the lowest setting right now. But I have never seen the smoke out here as bad as it is right now. So we're a little concerned and we are taking proactive steps just in case we have to evacuate. If we get to the second level, then we're going to start moving as many animals as we can. Until then, I've already started moving some of my artwork and irreplaceable items out to my dad's place where we'll evacuate to if we have to. Hopefully it's just unnecessary and I'm just being overly cautious about moving this kind of stuff. But I've got several trips of that kind of kind of thing to move and it would just uh, sicken me to death if uh, if I could have saved the artwork that I've made over the years and that I've collected from other artists 
forgive me if I ramble on a little bit. This is not a time to panic. This is a time to make hard choices, but deliberate and good ones. We've decided that if we have to evacuate our animals, we're going to save as many rabbits as we can. The chickens will have to be left behind. We'll leave them with as much food and water as we can. Probably in the chicken run, I'll just tip over some garbage cans and put a bunch of, uh, or put a bunch of chicken food in there and, and tip over the garbage cans so they'll have as much food as they want for quite a while. We'll fill up the waterers and probably even fish in a garden hose on a slow trickle so that we can create a little mud puddle in there that they can drink from for as long as they can. If things get really bad, then there's, you know, it's all for naught anyways. But uh, we're gonna do what we can. I'm up here on the roof to help mitigate some of the possible fire danger with all the storm debris up here and all the trees right around us. I think it's important to try and get anything that might be flammable off the roof for one thing clean out the gutters as well i'll be doing that with a with a leaf blower and then i also want to try and get as much debris away from the house on the driveway as i can so that if fi the fire department has to come out to save our house it will be as as easy as possible for them
this whole day I was constantly shifting from using the leaf blower until its battery would run out and have to be recharged and moving old fence boards and scrap lumber away from the house as well as loading the car for a couple of trips out to dad's house. I've edited for task continuity, but my day had been a bit more scattered than it appears. We are in level two evacuation. My dad has come out with his truck. We've got all the rabbits, almost all the rabbits out. We've got the goats out. This is the sound of Indigo crying because I can't get her in my car. 
I'm sitting here waiting for Brian's dad. Sorry, wrong direction. I can't make her go in my car. She's too big. I'm just grabbing a few last things, and then I'll take care of the uh, the chickens, because the chickens are going to be left behind. There is a level three, which is a go now at Henrici Road, which is really just a few blocks away. So this is uh, this is serious. Normally I give the pears to our chickens in smaller quantities, but I didn't know if I would be able to return. So here goes everything. Many Cooper chickens water would run out before their food would, so I opted to at least leave a couple of buckets of additional water in with them, and to leave their door ramp open while we were gone, rather than closing it at night for the additional predator protection. I'm just working my way around the house to clear as much flammable debris as one more fully charged battery would allow.
sorry, Turkey. I can't take you. Sorry, Turkey. I'll leave the turkey with as much water as she could need and as much food as seemed reasonable. Good luck, turkey. I am now evacuating. I was able to get more stuff in the car as a last load than I thought I would. And mitigated fire risks around the house as much as possible. I can talk to you on camera because the traffic is so slow with everybody else trying to evacuate. I'm just basically sitting here parked. It'll take me a while to get out to Dad's, but uh, I'm not worried about it now that I'm actually on the road. We were still at level two, which is the get set to evacuate, not the leave now, but Wendy and I thought it would be best to go ahead and head out now, just in case. Hopefully it turns out all right. I just heard on the radio that the Sandy M and River Creek fire, I think it was, something like that, are merging and the firefighters are kind of retreating a bit from that, so it doesn't it doesn't sound good. When I was packing up the last load for the for the trip out to Dad's, you know, I didn't have enough boxes or suitcases or anything like that. It was just, you know, grab the empty laundry basket and the garbage can and just stuff things in and fit it in the van where however you can. We really have been blessed out here. And I'm just acutely aware of how much we have to lose. We'll see how it turns out.